the truth the girls the truth the girls hi everyone well i wanted to talk to you a little bit about the casey anthony case hi it's rupert his channel is kiv resp that's the channel name on casey anthony I really love Rupert. I think he totally rocks and you should check out his channel and maybe he'll come on the radio with me sometime. But he did this video and it got me thinking about the Casey Anthony case and that maybe I should share uh, my, sp my perspective on it, what I had found. Really, I agree with Rupert that there was probably satanic ritual abuse involved. And I really think that the parents, especially Cindy, were heavily involved and maybe even that Cindy was actually the one who orchestrated this. First of all, Casey tried to give Kaylee up at birth, tried to give her up for adoption, and it was her mother, Cindy, who stopped her. Now, normally, if you have a baby and you want to give it up for adoption, it's up to you. So it shows me that her mother, Cindy, had a lot of influence, maybe a lot of control over her. Now, on the original 911 call, Cindy calls in and reports first that her car has been stolen by her daughter and that the daughter need, needs to be arrested. I mean, she knew at this point that the baby Kaylee was missing and that the car smelled like there was a dead body in it. But strangely, she calls up and reports first that the car has been stolen. And then while the call is being transferred, Cindy says to her daughter uh, that she's going to bring up the child thing next. And Casey asks for one more day and Cindy tells her, I've given you a month. Now that tells me that Cindy has known about this for the whole time. Also, during the whole call, Cindy is very calm and controlled, and it's only at the end that she breaks into hysterics kind of on cue. Cindy is a good manipulator, she's a good actor, and through the whole trial and the way she deals with the media, I think she, she pulls out the stops, she cries on cue, she manipulates, and I, I, I don't think that that was sincere. It, it was just so staged and contrived, the way she just started bursting into tears at the end. Okay, during the 911 call also, Cindy and Casey, while they're talking, while the call's being transferred, they, Cindy says to Casey that Kaylee is with Zanny. Zanny is the nanny, supposedly, although it turns out later that there never was a Zanny. Casey made her up. I really think that Cindy knows damn well at this point there is no Zanny, and also I think Cindy is really the mastermind here. Zanny the Nanny, it's like a name from a movie, it's so catchy. I, I think that this name was, they came up with this uh, to give to the media to, to fuel this, you know, the search for this fictitious nanny, and she's got this really catchy name, you know, something that really stick in the public's mind, really catch on with them, and I, I just have a feeling that it was Cindy who was behind that. I think both Casey and Cindy knew all along that Kaylee was dead and they just constructed this elaborate hoax to mislead the media and the public to think that they were actually looking for Kaylee. They knew and I think especially you know Cindy knew and it was probably Cindy who was the mastermind behind most of the deception. During the month that Kaylee was missing uh, Casey partied and went shopping and uh, got a tattoo that said Bella Vita, beautiful life, which is obviously very strange. Somebody posted a response to my blog saying that maybe um, Casey Anthony was an addict or an alcoholic, and this is just an example of you know how bad it can be with addiction and alcoholism. I really don't think so. I think this thing was absolutely planned out. Not only the murder but the cover-up and the whole family was involved. I think there's something much deeper going on. Addicts and alcoholics, yes, they will do things and they will be, you know, kind of having no consideration for other people. You know, like, you just want to party so much that your kid is dead and you're like, oh, well, I don't want the party to stop because she's such an alcoholic. But addicts and alcoholics are usually also very disorganized and their lives are in chaos and I, d I don't think that that's what it was. During the recorded conversations with Cindy and Casey while Casey's in prison, it looks to me like Casey, uh, Kate, Cindy is the one who's in control. Just by the kind of dynamic they have between the two of them, it's like Casey can hardly get a word in edgewise. Cindy seems to be one calling the shots and telling her how it's going to go. I just really get that feeling. 
And a couple of years into the trial, Casey suddenly states that the daughter, uh, her daughter died as a result of a drowning accident, which is obviously very strange. And it makes no sense. Now, this is where the really heavy evidence comes in that shows the kid was absolutely murdered. The coroner found uh, traces of duct tape on Kaylee, the baby's skull. She said that the child had most likely been murdered. The, the death was not consistent with the drowning death. It was unlikely that she had drowned. So saying that she had drowned really just shows that they're just lying because she didn't drown. I mean, why would she have duct tape on her if she had drowned? Also, traces of chloroform were found in, in Casey's car along with the undetermined DNA that they said it was either human or animal. They couldn't be sure. What do you think? It smells like a dead body. There's duct tape on her, DNA in the car, chloroform in the car. What's she doing with chloroform? And it just so happens somebody had Googled chloroform on Casey's computer. And then Cindy comes along and says that she was the one who did it. She was Googling chlorophyll and she came up with chloroform. It was an accident. The case, Cindy was at work when that happened, so she couldn't have been Googling on Casey's computer. She's totally covering up for her. And as I said, I think Cindy is very much involved in this and like the brains of the operation. And it also looks like they left evidence out of the trial. Like this inmate gave um, a statement in an interview saying that Casey Anthony told her that she used to use chloroform to knock Kaylee out so that she could go partying. And right near the end of the trial, Casey's lawyer said that Casey had been sexually abused by her father and that's why she's in the habit of lying. Heading in the right direction here, but not quite there yet. And apparently while in prison, Casey didn't act like someone who had just lost her child. She came across very self-centered, saying the whole thing was ruining her life. And uh, she referred to Kaylee as that little girl. This to me has a lot of the hallmarks of satanic ritual abuse. I mean, there's all this evidence. It's obvious these people are lying. They act in a bizarre way. Casey doesn't seem to have any remorse. Cindy, you know, has a flair for I don't want to say flair for the dramatic, only I think she just is a very good manipulator, good actor. And she goes from being very hostile to being hysterical in tears to being very pulled together when she wants to be. To me, she just looks like a really good actor and a very smart one. And there are a lot of parallels here with the John Benet Ramsey case. It was on this forum in Godlike Productions, uh, John Benet, the Devil, and Ritualistic Murder of John Benet Ramsey. And some of the parallels are, you know, there's a lot of physical evidence, circumstantial evidence that was not taken into consideration. Like, there was no evidence of a break-in to the Ramsey house. New snow, no tracks. No evidence of a break-in into the basement. Uh, John Ramsey says they came in through the window, but the cobwebs are undisturbed. The neighbors hear a child, probably John Benet, screaming in the middle of the night, and then this is somehow never mentioned. Uh, there were a lot of things. Also, John Ramsey, the way he, he acted when he, he found John Benet dead, the way he cried crocodile tears. And then this, you know, article or post on the forum, you'll find out that they were involved in a satanic cult, that John Benet Ramsey had, in the two weeks before she was murdered, started to uh, report that she was being violated sexually by people in dark robes, uh, in the dark with candles there, and it really sounds like satanic ritual abuse, that her vagina, when they did an autopsy, was twice the size of a normal six-year-old's vagina. But she, she was still a virgin, but she'd probably been uh, violated with an object or a finger. She had been taken to the doctor 60 times in the previous year, and the diagnosis was repeated yeast infections in a six-year-old. So there was a lot of evidence of um, sexual abuse. She had started to speak out. Uh, and maybe that's why they killed her. And the Ramseys were very well connected. And as it turns out, there were other very well connected, high up in society people in the satanic cult who happened to worship a deity called John Bett. In the case of um, Casey, I, I didn't find any, you know, articles or anything talking about the, the Anthony's being known to be any any kind of satanic cult. I mean, their behavior is 
evil and bizarre and doesn't seem sincere. There's a lot of evidence, just like in the Ramsey case. And Casey was let off. The thing is, you have to prove that it was Casey who did it. And I guess the way that they they did it, they, they, they can pretty much say that, you know, um, Kaylee was murdered, but they can't prove who it was. Was it Casey or was it her mother? But I guess that's the kind of system there is that has to be proved beyond a reasonable doubt. So I guess they could say she's murdered, but they don't know who did it. Maybe that's why she got off. But I think there's something more to this. I think that, uh, honestly, I think that uh, Kaylee Anthony was probably sacrificed as like a satanic ritual murder, maybe by Casey, maybe by Cindy. I just smell the devil on this case, you know? It's got the smell of Satan on it. Is it possible also, I thought, that maybe Casey killed her daughter to spare her from being in a family that was involved in sat satanic ritual abuse? Maybe. Or maybe she just killed her for fame because she is, after all, famous now and is probably going to make a lot of money off books and you know, movies and all these other kinds of things. I just wanted to bring this up because this is real. People, you know, maybe think I'm silly when I say things are satanic or the devil, but I, I believe that this is really what's happening. The world, the world leaders, they serve the devil, and things like satanic ritual abuse happen all the time, and it would explain why someone could get away with such a horrible crime. So, thanks for listening to me, and don't forget to watch uh, Rupert's video, and check out his channel, it's very good. So thanks, and I'll see you next time.